a breaking news story that might be true crime or point towards a darker conspiracy. And then we take a look at a little creature from South African folklore. What happens when a tiny, mischievous little creature from South Africa gets involved in the world of true crime? That sounds actually a pretty good story. I can't wait to get to that one. Today on Dead Rabbit Radio. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Dead Rabbit Radio. I'm your host, Jason Carpenter. I'm having a great day. I hope you guys are having a great day too. I should say, welcome back, remaining listeners. After yesterday's episode, the Fat Witch episode, I still have no idea where that came from. I have no idea where that came from. I'll check. Usually my screen is blanked out by text documents. I can't really see how long certain segments are taking. But at a certain point, I was like, I've just been talking about fat witches way too long. I just had to go with it. And so thank you for coming back to the... I I liked it. I liked that segment. (laughs) Well, it wasn't a segment. It was a whole episode. But I got to stop talking about yesterday because we actually have some breaking news. Now, things are developing very quickly with this one. But I wanted to go ahead and get this out because this is weird. And what's weird is nobody is covering it. Outside of local news, you think this would be big news. There was a little blurb on Drudge, nothing on Fox, nothing on CNN. I had to go and look at like local news sites, what's going on. June 4th, 2019, in the town of Pocahontas, Arkansas, Linda Collins Smith is found dead. She's shot, she's murdered, it's been ruled a homicide. Who's Linda Collins Smith, you ask? Former state senator for the state of Arkansas. She was a Repu- she was a Democrat. She switched party to, to become a Republican. She's no longer a state. Well, she's definitely not one now. But at the time of her murder, she was not a state senator. That happened on June 4th, 2019. They think that Linda may have died the night before because people were saying that they heard gunshots in the house. But I don't know why nobody called the cops. Eventually, they do find her. Now, the reports are weird because some people are saying they had gunshots in the area like the day before. But other reports are saying the body was very, very badly decomposed in the house. June 6th, 2019. Six hours away in the state of Oklahoma, in the city of Norman. So Norman, Oklahoma, six hours away. Former Oklahoma state senator, Republican, Jonathan Nichols, shot dead. With Jonathan, they have not, re- he was shot, but they have not said whether or not it is a homicide or a suicide. But you have, within a week, two former Republican state senators separated by six hours shot in their own home. No news on it. None. One little blurb, halfway through Drudge. No one else is covering it. Two scenarios, one's very likely murder, suicide affair something like that who knows i don't have enough to really say that's the case but that it's possible but then the conspiracy side starts to think what could the it's weird because the media is like oh no these are totally unrelated even though all these data points match state senators republicans she actually served from like 2011 to 2014 i believe and he served from 2000 to 2012 but they were state senators. They weren't like in the national senate or the the real the, the senate, the real senate, the varsity senate. They were JV. They were farm league senators. But anyways, I'm sure they had to have met each other, being that close to each other, both having the same profession, the same political party, all of that stuff. How did they know each other? She has been ruled a homicide. It may be a suicide, murder, suicide. He may have killed himself. But who knows? Could also be. It's possible they were involved in some shady business and someone was cleaning up the messes. It's possible that some government wet works team, which is actually the like wet works is one of the coolest names. I love that name. Wet work, if you don't know, is up and close assassination mercenary work. I actually found out about it because there was an old image comic called Wet Work. And I, that is such a, I was, remember thinking, that's the name of a superhero team that I want to join, Wet Work. But anyways, it could be some Black Ops wet work thing, cleaning up. Could be some alien disclosure project, and they're about to... Who knows? It could go... Unfortunately, it's it's 
two people have died. And that's the unfortunate part. And normally I would just think, uh, you know, murder, suicide. I just think it's weird that no one's covering, no one's covering this. No one's covering this. Let's go ahead and move on to our first story here, though. First story was actually a recommendation. It was a recommendation. This was the one I called out the other day. I couldn't find out who did this. On YouTube, there's a guy named Shinigami Dan. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Shin- like I always pronounce stuff right. Shinigami Dan. I appreciate this recommendation. Quite fascinating story. Let's go ahead and hop in the Dead Rabbit Dirigible because we're gonna have to because we're gonna have to travel to South Africa, and we're actually going to go back in time a bit because this creature we're going to talk about is quite has quite an odd story behind it. So in Africa, they built these little hut things. They're known as rondalos. Am I pronouncing am I pronouncing any of this stuff right? Basically huts type things that everyone would sleep in together. And you would have the family in there sleeping in these huts. And on cold nights, you would light a fire in the hut to stay warm. Now I know a lot of you guys are going, well, yeah, and you know where this part's going. But sometimes someone in the hut would wake up and everyone else in the hut was dead. Fires out, three dead family members surrounding you. You go out, tell the chieftain they come in. Chieftain comes in, puts on his sunglasses, looks like it's a case of tokalashi. That was okay. Sorry, that's an old joke. Anyways, and they go, "What's a tokalashi?" And the 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 chieftain's like, "Uh," realizes he has to make something up on the spot. So I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. I got stuck on that stupid joke. Here's what happened. So you started having these families that were dying. And they couldn't figure out what it was. So, of course, like all folklores, you're going to go to some sort of supernatural reason behind it. Because it wasn't just that everyone in the hut was dead. It was that you weren't. You and they, So the question is, why weren't you killed? Putting, putting on my sunglasses, you're very suspicious that everyone died but you. It's like, sorry, sorry. Sorry, chieftain. Anyways. So, ZSI, it's Zulu Scene Investigation. So... Anyway, ZSI comes into the village and they go, what is going on here? And what they realized was that, because it was happening, it wasn't super common, but it would happen. And they started to put together connections that people were laying on the ground. The chances of them dying in their sleep was much higher than people who were propped up, like had their head against the back of the wall or were in a bed. People laying on the ground would die. Now, we understand what was going on now. That basically by lighting the fire indoors, they're creating carbon dioxide poisoning or carbon monoxide. One of the two. You don't want to breathe in too much of one or the other. But what would happen was the fire would start eating up all the oxygen. Om nom nom nom. I have (laughs) my grasp on science is limited. It's basically Zulu level. It's basically like 1400 Zulu warrior level science. But anyways, fire god eats oxygen. And replaces it all with carbon dioxide. And carbon dioxide's heavier, so it comes down. So if you're laying on the ground, you're just breathing in carbon dioxide. You die in your sleep. People who were propped up were still getting some of that sweet, sweet oxygen while people laying on the ground didn't. But what the legend was, was that there must be some sort of demon killing these people in their sleep. And basically the idea came of this thing called a tokolosh or tikolosh. Tokolosh, though, is how I saw it mostly pronounced. Not pronounced. That's how I mostly read it. And so they said, this little creature will basically sneak in your hut and draw the breath out of you and kill you unless you put bricks under each leg of your bed. Basically, you want to lift your head up or lift your whole body up so the Tokolosh can't get you. He's this little tiny guy, little tiny person that follows you around. So that's it, right? Shingami Dan sent us this story about this little tiny guy that breathes your air, and it's a normal folklore. Oh, he also rapes women. I forgot that point, but there's not a lot of details on that. There's just like, and what I'm thinking that part of that comes from is from women who were dying from the carbon dioxide thing and then waking up almost like a night terror because they're basically suffocating and they wake up before they actually die and they like, are just physically shaking. They're, like, freaking out. It's the same thing as, like, a sleep paralysis type of thing, where as they're coming out of this dream, as they're lifting up out of the carbon dioxide, they may be hallucinating themselves being violated. I think that's where that part of the myth came from. But we've covered cryptids like that before, but what's interesting is that this cryptid, or this creature, this demon, whatever you want to say, 
We can trace it to that root, but his madness goes far beyond a fire inside of a hut. The Tokolosh is not just this little creature that the people believe walks around your hut. It wasn't just a little dude who hung out in your hut. They hung out everywhere. There was a lot of them. And you could not refuse any of their commands. Case in point. There was this young guy named Eli Fossey. That actually was his full first name, sorry. His name was Eli Fossey Masomi. That's what it is. This story is in 1953. We're still in South Africa, so much, much more recent than these old folklore tales. Eli Fossey really wanted to be a shaman, but he wasn't a good shaman. He quite sucked at the black arts. I would assume he wasn't fat enough to do the magic, but for whatever reason, he couldn't make it as a shaman. So he goes to another shaman. This story's creepy, too. This story's really creepy. He goes to this other shaman to get some advice. He goes, I really need your help. I really want to be a, a good shaman. This is what the shaman says. You will go with this son of mine. A little boy walks out, or walks in, I guess grammatically is right, walks into the room. This is the exact quote from the shaman, master shaman. He says, you will go with this son of mine and get me the blood of 15 people to help my chemist shop. First, I want the blood of a girl. Now, Eli Fossey, this is all what he said happened. And he said that the son was actually a tokolosh in disguise. And he knew it was a tokolosh because it basically shrunk down to little three apple high smurf height. Tokoloshes are quite small. Sometimes they're described as being up to your hip. But this one crawled onto his shoulder. So he had this little demon person sitting on his shoulder who was basically helping him get these 15 vials of blood. He couldn't refuse the orders of the tokolosh. And it would constantly be saying, go here. Yes, go up here. Yes. Yes, there's your victim. Nice and ripe. Kill her. Kill her. And Eli Fossey ended up, like, doing basically what the Tokolo said. His first victim, he raped and murdered a woman in front of his girlfriend. And the girlfriend is like, uh, this is not a good third date. I was expecting something totally different. The girlfriend runs to the cops and he gets arrested. And he's sitting there with this tokolosh on his shoulder. And the tokolosh is like, you want to escape, don't you? I will help you escape. But we have 14 more vials of blood to get. Now he's in police custody. But he escapes. Gets out. Gets out of jail. Goes away. People start looking for him. Kills five children. Filling their vials with blood. Gets arrested. You want out, don't you? I can help you out. And then we get more blood. Escapes police custody. They can't keep him in jail. This is 100% documented. Other than the little dude on his shoulder, like, he actually got arrested multiple times and escaped each time. Multiple murderer at this point. And he fully believes that the Tokoloshi is helping him escape custody. Not only just escaping from jail, but escaping capture as he continues to kill. Now, he's known in South Africa as the axe killer, but he also used knives and clubs. And it's funny because a club is the only weapon, really, out of those that has one purpose, to kill. A club was created to kill. Knives you can use for cutting fish and stuff like that, axes for chopping down trees, but a club serves no purpose other than to bash in another human's brains or an animal's brains. It was only designed for one thing, to kill. So he's walking around South Africa. This whole thing lasted a course of 18 months. He ended up getting the 15th vial of blood. It's like a horribly dark side quest of an MMO. He gets his 15th vial of blood. And the Togolo says, this is an exact quote. This is what he said the Togolo said after the 15th vial of blood. You have rendered good service. Now we will wash in the river and part. Now I should have mentioned this earlier, but the Togolo is a, is a river, is a water spirit. 
That's basically where they come from. That's where they get their power. They're formed when a Tokolosh is first born. A red-hot poker is stabbed into its brain, which gives it all these mystical powers. Don't try that at home. Don't try that at home. But it also uses water. It can turn invisible when it gets wet. And it probably uses it as some sort of information highway, like jumps in, finds out what all the other Tokoloshes are doing. It's how they get their internet porn. They just splash around in a, in a river. They're like, oh, yes. That's how they get all their information in the water. But anyways, so he does go into the river. The, him and the Tokolosh part ways. I don't know if he if the original dude gets the vials of blood. They kind of don't really tell us that because all these sources are really old. This was reported in Time Magazine when it happened. It was kind of a big story back then. But after him and the Tokolosh part, he's arrested. He's arrested. And while he's in jail, getting ready for execution, they have a trial. And his defense was, I didn't do it, Your Honor. Little man sitting on my exhibit A. And he just points at his shoulder. They're like, what is it? And he's like, there was a Tokolosh sitting here. Exhibit A. And they're like, do you have any other evidence? And he's like, no. No, Your Honor. Anyways, they do go to trial. He says that he shouldn't be found guilty because the Tokolosh made him do everything. And the judge says, yeah, that's stupid. That's totally stupid. But at the same time, the region, they still believe in this thing. So people are like, uh, maybe a Tokolosh shouldn't make him do this. A bunch of chief, a bunch of like Zulu shaman and chieftains, nine of them, actually petitioned the court saying, we want to be there when he's hung. Oh, spoiler alert. He's found guilty from the trial. And these Zulu chieftains and shamans say, we want to be there when he's hung. Because we want to be sure that the Tokolosh does not save him from the noose. But while he's in jail, Ili Fossi, when he goes to bed, he makes a little tiny bed next to his. And the guard goes, what are you doing? And he goes, oh, I'm just making this in case my friend wants to show up. Make him a little bed. So insane, maybe. Really seeing this thing, who knows. But eventually, he does go to the gallows. And everyone's watching. And the shaman are standing there watching. And the trap door springs. And he hangs. And he dies. And one of the shaman turns to the camera and goes, Good. (laughs) I was afraid the Togolosh was going to try saving him. But it didn't happen. And everyone starts kind of filtering out of the execution room. Or I guess it's not a room, it's a hanging execution area. But one of the shamans said, you know, there's a little epilogue. One of the shamans turns to the camera as well and goes, yes, it was good that Ili Fossi died today. He was an evil man, tormented by a tokolosh, but evil nonetheless. However, there is a chance that Ili Fossi himself may now become a tokolosh. To curse others. Shaman starts walking out. Credits start rolling. So that was all reported in Time Magazine. And it was a real trial. There was really 15 murders. What's creepy about it? Well, (laughs) other than the multiple murders. The talking demon. And the insane man. As I was reading it, I thought. You know what it seems like to me? That the master shaman was being controlled by the Tokolosh. It's almost like an It Follows slash The Ring type of thing, where he's being tormented by this little demon who's taken on the body of his son. He may not even have a son. He may have just assumed the form of a son to trick other people, but you have this master shaman. I imagine him sitting in a shop and the creature going, get me blood, get me blood, I need blood, get me blood. And the shaman's like, oh my God, please stop, stop. And he's just being tormented and he can't fight it. And then this young man walks into his shop and says, I need some help. And he passes that evil curse onto this young man who couldn't resist the power of the Tokolosh. And then you imagine that the sh- it's like, again, the shaman is finally like, oh, thank God, I can finally not hear that horrible little creature screaming in my ear all the time, finally get some peace and quiet. But his peace and quiet would have only lasted 18 months. Because after they washed in the river and parted ways, one day the shaman's sitting there, he's making tea. He hears the door open. He turns around and he sees a small figure walking through the front door carrying 15 little jars saying, I'm back, daddy. To be tormented by spirits 
is one of those weird things that modern day people say they're just insane. Demonic possessions, things like that. It is one of those things that is really hard. It's on the border of mysticism and science. Because we don't know enough about how the human brain works. And we really know nothing about how the mystic arts work. We have a, we can like do a roadmap of the brain, but then you go, well, are some people born bad or do they, or is it nature versus nurture? And people go, I don't know. Like we have a limited knowledge of the brain and we have a made up or intuitive knowledge about the supernatural, but it can never really ever be proven. And demonic possession slides right between those two. When a person's having an epileptic fit, Back in the 1800s, it would look like they were possessed. Like, here, go in this room. You can see this person having an epileptic fit. If it was the 1800s, you would think this guy was possessed by the demon. You'd be like, yeah. But then you have stories of people who are mentally insane, who you would go, this guy is, he was considered a sadistic sex killer. Experts were saying he's not insane. It actually looks like he enjoys killing people. Because what's weird is after he was caught, he took them and showed them the locations of all the people he killed. He knew exactly where he buried them. And they go, scientists go, or psychologists said, well, they're scientists too, but they said he seemed to relish going back to these areas. He seemed to be a sexual, sadistic pervert who enjoyed going back to where the bodies were. So he simply seemed insane. But then you go, if that's true, if we totally accept the scientific rationale, How did he keep escaping from jail? And scientists just have to go, I don't know. And that's where it's in the middle of the two. There's just enough stuff that we can point to actual science and say, this is how a sexual sadistic pervert's brain works. To, how does a jail door get unlocked? How does a man twice slip out of police custody? It's easy to always accept the scientific answer. It's easy to always accept the paranormal answer. But the answer may actually be closer to the middle. Because a sadistic sexual pervert is probably more easily influenced by a demonic creature. And if you had someone who really wanted to go around bashing people's heads in with a club... And they find a little sprite, a little evil creature that says, You and me, buddy. You do the killings. I'll help you get away. And together, we'll wash this country in blood. Even an insane man wouldn't turn down a deal like that. DeadRabbitRadio at gmail.com is going to be our email address. You can also hit us up at facebook.com slash DeadRabbitRadio. Twitter is at Jason O. Carpenter. Dead Rabbit Radio is the daily paranormal conspiracy and true crime podcast. You don't have to listen to it every day, but I'm glad you listened to it today. Have a great one, guys. <laughs>